as the sun rose on the morning of the 15th of September, 2011, myself and 24 other students from Victoria University in Wellington were waking up to the biggest adventure of our lives. We were on West Potomac Park in Washington, D.C., ready to begin construction on our small solar-powered batch, our home of tomorrow. We were up against some of the leading architecture and engineering universities from around the world in a home-building contest like none other. With our hard hats on, steel cap boots on, and high-vis vests, we were set to take on these teams in a competition which challenged 20 university teams to design, build, and operate a small solar-powered house. Run by the US Department of Energy and held in Washington, DC, the competition is broken into 10 separate categories. And the winner is the team that best blends architecture and engineering with comfort and energy use. For the first time in this competition's history, a team from the Southern Hemisphere was involved in the contest. A team from 8,750 miles away in a small island nation called New Zealand. We turned up on our first day with our big smiles and strange accents. <laughs> Many of the teams not knowing where we were from. Some thinking we were from a small town in the American Midwest. <laughs> Others a part of the UK. One man even asked us if we had TV down there in the islands. <laughs> we were a small team in a, from a small country in a very, very big competition that challenged the very best in building design, technology, and innovation. A very tough task for a team from a country that didn't even have TVs. <laughs> but with only seven days to build our house, we had no time to ponder over the enormity of our challenge that laid ahead. And as the crane dropped in the first piece of our house, we began this exciting journey. Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Ben Yagasma, and I'm one of the First Light team that sent a small crazy idea really, Kiwi Batch over to the other side of the world to compete in this competition. I'm honoured to be here today on behalf of the team and present our story about our home of tomorrow. Now to begin with, I have to start with probably the most fundamental question of all. What is home? For me, home conjures up memories of family, of friends, of my childhood, of waking up on Christmas morning and running downstairs to see the tree beautifully lit up, there with my family opening my Christmas presents and getting the gifts that I dreamed of. Or on a cold winter day, you know, the rain, horizontal rain here in Wellington coming in against the windows, and you're snuggled up on the couch watching a movie. These memories and, and, and feelings of home make us feel safe, secure, nurtured, and loved. And this feeling is, is different for each and every one of us. Home is, as they say, where the heart is. Home is, if it's anything like mine, a dusty, noisy, delightful mess. Home is where you can run around with no pants on. <laughs> Home is where you live. It's warm and comfortable. It's energy efficient. And in the first light house, home was the Kiwi batch. We wanted to send a uniquely New Zealand home into this competition, something that really represented what it meant to live in New Zealand. And the Kiwi Batch was the perfect example of this and represented the Kiwi spirit. But a home is traditional. It's definitely not energy efficient and low performance. And yet we were going to a competition which demanded the best in energy efficiency. It had to generate all its energy with solar power, be transported and be prefabricated. So we had to go back to the values of the Batch, those homely qualities that I talked about in the beginning. And we broke this down into three areas. Firstly, focusing on social interaction. This is really the heart of it all. This is where all of our memories come from, dealing with fam hanging out with family and friends inside the home. Reconnecting with the natural landscape, which is a massive part about living in New Zealand. You know, living outside on the deck is just as much an important part of a home as, as the bedroom. And we wanted to embrace that, not turn away from it. And finally, humanizing technology. 
remembering at the end of the day, this was a home and not some super advanced piece of high-tech futuristic technology. And so we developed a floor plan which enabled flexible social space that could change and adapt to how the person wanted to live within the home. To the south, to the cold side of the house, we had the bathroom, laundry, and kitchen spaces. To the north, or in Washington DC to the south, and opening out to the sun, was the bedroom, study, and living spaces. And in the center was the dining and kitchen space, the heart of a home, where socializing and entertaining came together. This was the bit that brought it all together. Everything in this home was orientated towards connecting you with the outdoors. A large exterior deck ran around the whole exterior perimeter of the house and led you up and into the house through large bifolding doors in the entrance. The deck carried on inside, leading you into the dining space. Now the home was small. It was as like a Kiwi batch, designed for maximum flexibility to minimize its overall footprint. Down one end was a bedroom capable of sleeping a couple. Down the other was a flexible living space that could be adapted to accommodate guests. Everything about the house was designed to make you feel relaxed, at home, just like you would in New Zealand. But this was anything like a New Zealand home. As you may know, New Zealand homes are not known for their energy efficiency or their performance. They are, over the majority, damp, cold, and uncomfortable. To be brutally honest, the majority of new homes, existing homes, and some homes, even those built to New Zealand building code standards, fall far short of international best practice in terms of energy efficiency and building performance. What that means is our homes waste energy. And in New Zealand homes, we waste energy in three particular areas. Comfort, so heating and cooling the house, and if you're anything like my flat living in Wellington, you spend a lot of energy trying to stay warm in those winter months. Hot water, and then a third to those other forms of energy, like cooking, watching TV. And with the first lighthouse, we wanted to minimize our energy use in each of those three areas by using natural forms of energy through a combination of passive and active strategies. The result was a house that used less than a third of the total energy of a, a, a traditional Kiwi house. Firstly, comfort. The first light house was designed to maintain a comfortable and healthy internal temperature here in Wellington between 18 and 24 degrees all year round without using any heating energy whatsoever. This was, you know, imagine being able to run around with your pants off <laughs> in the middle of winter and not having to worry about that ginormous energy bill at the end of the month. How we did this? By focused on the thermal envelope. We had 250 mils of wool insulation in the floor, wall and roof that created a big woolly jumper that kept, kept the house warm in winter and cool in summer. We had an air tightness layer which acted like the coat which controlled moisture in the home and also kept the home healthy. We had large triple glazed windows to the north specifically designed to let the sun in in the winter but also to open up during the summer months to keep the house cool. We had concrete in the floor and in the table in the central module to maintain a comfortable and healthy internal temperature all year round. This took a care of a third of our energy. So you, you take away comfort. You achieve comfort without having to use any energy. On the roof, we had 40 evacuated tube solar collectors, which provided fresh, clean, free, hot water to the home all year round. This further reduced our energy consumption compared to a typical Kiwi house by another third. Now you're left with the final third. This is the tricky bit. Because this final third of energy is more down to how we live in the home as it is what technologies that you can throw at it. You know, it's about the light in the room, the, the, the stove in the kitchen, the TV in the living room. You know, you may say to me, why don't we just stick some solar panels on the roof? And that'll take care of that final third. And that's what we did with the first lighthouse. 
and that's how we were able to achieve a house that generated as much energy as what it used during the, the competition. But at the end of the day, not all of us are going to be able to achieve or afford a 6.3 kilowatt photovoltaic array. Using energy, and this is where it comes down to us, using energy, like I said in the beginning, about a home is about living. Now, living in a home consumes energy. And this is where we need to take our own personal responsibility to reduce our own energy consumption. By doing this, we can have a major impact on our environment. In New Zealand alone, residential housing accounts for a third of all energy consumed and 20% of our CO2 emissions. This is huge. This is just residential housing. The reason that this statistic gets me so excited is that the technological feasibility of retrofitting and creating new homes with technology and design principles like the First Light House is achievable right here, right now. And by doing that, we can have a massive impact and reduce our environmental footprint. But there are two problems with this, two things holding us back. Firstly, our behaviour. You know, as I said, energy in the home is as much down to how we live in the home as it is the technologies that we put into it. As an architect or an architectural graduate, I could throw in as much technology into a house as I, as I wanted, but if I still live the way that I do now, I still leave the lights on in the, in the back room, I'm, we're not going to make a difference. Secondly, this type of technology is, the uptake of this type of technology in New Zealand is too slow. At the moment, energy efficient design and eco housing in New Zealand is something for the rich, it's something for the crazy. Every day I hear excuses, too many excuses. It's too expensive, it's unachievable, there's no one offering it in New Zealand, it doesn't suit my lifestyle. But this is not the case. We can do it right here, right now, and it's time that we make a change to our buildings towards a more sustainable future. And what better time to do it than now? New Zealand is facing a housing shortage. In Christchurch and Auckland alone, we require 10,000 new homes just to keep up with demand. How are we going to build these homes? Are we going to build them to the same below average standard that we've been doing at present? Or are we going to change towards building a better home for the future of tomorrow? Now the problem is that the residential housing industry is one of the slowest, slowest innovating in the country. Where other industries are moving towards more efficient, more productive means of production, we still build our homes like we did 50 years ago. But we don't have to. And it's through this thing called prefabrication. Now, some of you of my generation may think of this as a bright new hope. But some of you a little older might go, look at me, frown, turn up your nose and go, I don't want these drab, cheap classrooms. But this is not the case. Around the world, prefabrication or prefabricated houses are becoming more efficient, more energy efficient, more productive, of a higher quality than traditional construction. And the First Light House was a perfect example of this. The First Light House, I'm not too ashamed to say it, was a prefab. It was a modern, energy efficient, prefabricated home. And it had to be, because we had to send a house from here all the way over there. We did this by splitting the house into six separate modules or pieces. These 3D pieces formed 3D modules that could be easily transported on the back of a ship, or on, on a ship. Within these modules were broken down into separate floor, wall, and roof panels. Each of these was pre also prefabricated in a different location around the country. The roofs here in Wellington, the walls in Porirua, and the floors in Auckland. These were then brought together in a shed here in Wellington, insulated, lined, and finished, and then pulled apart again, put on the back of a truck, and transported to Frankett's Park where they were assembled again and put displayed to the public for a two week period. This house was then pulled apart, shipped all the way to the other side of the world, and dropped in Washington DC for the competition. 
where it was put together in less than seven days by a team of students who many of them had never picked up a drill in their lives. Now, what if we built all our homes like this? What if we used prefab technology and we built our homes in a factory? This way, we could achieve the level of quality and performance that I was talking about with an energy-efficient home. We could then deliver our homes to site, saving on time, cost, and quality. I'm not talking about the mass production of homes. I'm talking about mass customization. The ability to be able to use modern processes, modern technologies, to create parts of a home in a controlled environment that can be then put together in a wide range, a wide variety of configurations to suit both the site and most importantly, to suit the individual that makes this object their home. The neat thing is, is that this is not a dream. This is happening right here in New Zealand. The ground underneath traditionally built homes is murmuring as support and uptake of energy efficient homes and prefabrication is beginning to take hold. And it's, going to, and it's beginning to transform the industry to create the new home of tomorrow, the home of the future. Now what of tomorrow? What of future? The reason that I don't like the, to use the word future is it seems too far away. It seems a little bit like George Jetson's. But we're not dealing with flying cars. We're dealing with technology and ideas that have existed here in New Zealand and around the world for years. It's time that we stand up and stop making excuses. The first lighthouse was an example of a modern, energy efficient home built right here in New Zealand by New Zealanders using New Zealand technology and New Zealand products. The title should really not read the building of tomorrow, but should read the building of today. As the sun set in Washington DC in 2011, and a team of Victoria University students removed their hard hats, and the house was returned back to New Zealand, they began the next journey of their life. Now two years on, a new dawn is approaching, which will see a new standard of building design, technology, and energy efficiency for a better future here in New Zealand. Thank you.